What's up, guys? Episode 34 here, Half the Story Podcast. We are back. A little less hair this time. Um, feeling a little bit better. If you listen to the last episode, uh, you know I've been dealing with a little bit of uh, neck and back issues this past couple weeks. I think it's been actually 15 or 16 days already. Um, but uh, starting to feel a little bit better, man. So uh, uh, I said I'd get an episode in a week. It's Sunday night, so here we go. Let's get this uh, episode started here. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit better. I've been doing a lot of uh, stretching and uh, doctor visits and things like that, chiropractor visits. Um what else? I got a couple of massages. Uh, I've been doing ice baths. I got the Theracan. Got that vibrator out. And uh, been doing a lot of stretching and taking pills and doing steroids and stuff like that. Because I think I was just kind of really um, inflamed, really, is what they said. Um, and I was having like a nerve issue with my uh, left arm. Um, so it's getting better. We ain't a hundred percent yet, but, uh, um, trying to get back, um, to feeling a little bit normal. And, uh, one way of doing that is, uh, by, uh, doing another episode. So yeah, I've just been kind of a little bit down the last couple of weeks just cause I haven't been doing a, a lot of stuff really. Um, really moving is the biggest thing, like moving my body. Um, so yesterday I actually went to the gym and sat in the sauna and the hot tub and like went on the elliptical for a little bit and felt really good to move. Um, yeah, so I was just kind of, um, yeah, I'm excited to get moving again, really, to be honest with people. And uh, um, yeah, yeah. It was, it's been a long, long couple of weeks and a little low energy, kind of like last time, but it's been a, been a beast trying to go to sleep sometimes um, with this nerve pain down my arm and uh, everything else going on in the world, as they say, you know. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I'm excited for this week and I'm starting to feel better. Work is starting to pick up. Um, this whole time I've been working, trying to power through it. I've been taking, you know, ibuprofen every six hours on the clock. Um, just doing whatever I can to get um, some inflammation down in my body. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I was um, today or this weekend. Didn't really, didn't really do much this weekend. We just been hanging out, kind of doing stuff around the house. Didn't know how I was going to be feeling and stuff, but uh, I got a haircut and the price was right on this haircut because I did it myself. Um, and probably if you're watching, it looks probably pretty okay. Um, camera's probably about five feet from me, so uh, you can't really see any blemishes or anything like that, so, um, but uh I bet if you got close, it would look like I cut my hair a little bit. So, um, you know, we'll see. I just had kind of like a Britney moment, like a Britney Spears moment where I, I was just like, I just need to cut my hair. I need to do something. I haven't, you know, done anything the last couple of weeks except for rehab, you know, my neck and stuff. So, um, cut my hair off and, uh, trim my beard a little bit so kind of a rebirth so to say um and hopefully uh hopefully the next couple of weeks will be a little bit better and uh get back to being 100 percent. but uh yeah uh getting old is something that is real if you don't believe it um everyone gets old father time is uh undefeated and uh you know, it was just a good reminder to take care of myself, you know, as best as I can and, uh, you know, watch out for myself a little bit because 
when you're young, you think you're invincible, and sometimes you are. You can go out all night drinking and go to work at Subway the next morning, no problem. But uh, when you get to be 31, like me, which isn't even that old, um, you just wake up one morning and your your neck's kinked for two weeks. So um, that's pretty much getting old. And uh, you don't think you're ever going to get old, but then you get older and there you are. You just get old, so... And everyone, some people listening are probably like, I'm twice your age, like, which you are probably. Um, but when I was younger, I always thought age was just a number and not in any like weird sense. But uh, I always thought you kind of, however old you thought you were, that's kind of like your mentality kind of. So I always think like, I'm never going to grow up and... uh I still believe I'm never going to grow up in the sense. I feel like I've still got like a mind of a a resource kid, which I was. Um, and if you're not familiar with resource, it's kind of a step up from special education. And uh, yeah, so I was in resource all through my life. I could have actually, I could have uh, graduated resource actually in 10th grade, I think. I think my levels were up enough, but I kind of liked uh, hanging out in resource too, so I stuck with it, you know. I went K through 12 through resource, so I'm a survivor in that sense. Um, I don't know what I was talking about, about that, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought there. I, I, I was just rambling a little bit too much on that, but no, uh, yeah, I cut my hair, and my hair was pretty long prior to this, um, but dang, dude, my my forehead has gotten a lot bigger since the last time I cut my hair, and there's a whole lot of, uh, like, open, open range up there up top, like, a lot of room for some grazing or you know, housing developments, things like that. The kind of the side of my head, like it's doing, you know, it's retreating, you know, a little bit. Um, it's not reseeding, it's retreating. Um, um, so yeah, I trim my hair, I even trim my eyebrows. I'm getting that stage where, you know, you gotta start trimming, trimming everything really. So um, I remember one time, uh, when we were living in Portland, me and Christy, uh, uh, like trimmed my chest hair and all that, my body hair and stuff like that. And I usually like stand on a towel and trim it all off. That way you don't, you know, you don't got a huge mess. But then like after I'm done, if I cut my hair, my beard, you know, my body hair, whatever, then I'll take the towel and go outside and like, like just get the hair off and stuff like that. But we were living in a duplex, and we just kind of had, like, I don't know, like a six-foot, like, it was almost, it wasn't like an alley, but it was kind of like just a little alley behind our duplex, because the neighbor's fence was right there, so it was just like a, like a six-foot, like, wide, like, walkway. Um, so I threw my hair back there one day, and that was, I think, my beard hair and my body hair, and I just kind of dusted it out like shook out the rug a little bit with the hair on it and then I went to work and then like the next day Christy must have been at home doing something like cleaning around and she texted me and she's like uh freaking out that she thinks like there might have been someone murdered in our uh back alleyway like walkway she's like there's a bunch of hair like I think someone like might have died or could have been murdered back here like um so that was pretty funny little did she know it was just my body hair so um yeah cut cut the hair and uh feeling hopefully uh reborn a little bit from this neck injury and uh one thing while working with it is it, um it sucked 
it has been bad um especially driving because you got to check them uh blind spots you got to turn look everything like that so that's all pretty pretty tough and then uh but one good thing about working in healthcare, and you know there's not a thousand things that are good but there's a couple good things about working in healthcare. um is uh so my neck was really bad and i was having a really bad day and just waiting on that next ibuprofen and uh then i you know i saw a patient who had a tree fall on him somehow and uh his back was hurt and it wasn't his neck it was his back but uh, it kind of made me i don't know made me feel better about myself a little bit um, because that could have been, you know, he's got a lot, got it a lot worse than I do. So, um, there's one good thing about working in healthcare. It's that usually people are sicker than you that you're working with. And, uh, it kind of gives you like a good perspective on life. And, uh, yeah, it just made me, uh, appreciate at least what I had. Cause I had good neck movement maybe, or like good lower body movement and stuff like that. And this person didn't. So yeah, I don't know. You just got to find some of those things sometimes when you're in, uh, I'm not going to say I was in a dark place, but I've, it's been a rough couple weeks and, uh, any little thing that you can find to kind of help you out of it or make you feel better about yourself or uh, make you feel more grateful or gratitude or anything like that um, kind of helps you through the day. So um, yeah, enough about the neck. So in my Brittany moment with the, the, the cutting of the hair. So yeah, I'll probably uh, rock this hair for a little bit and then maybe go get it lined up professionally at some point um, and uh, kind of see what's 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 in store for me what the what the hair guy or lady says about my hair like the shape of it at least what it's doing and kind of what i can do to you know or what i can't do to stop it or start it you know so um yeah other than that this weekend we've been pretty low-key doing things around the house been trying to take a few naps here and there and uh did uh 15 minutes on an elliptical yesterday so that felt really good and uh just been hanging out um yeah um so recently we got into kind of like a family shared account on a youtube tv and youtube tv is uh it's pretty much just like cable TV on the internet. So you can watch live TV. You can, um, it's got, I think it's got like on demand too. But yeah, you don't need cable. It's just, they've got all the major networks, everything like that. And uh, so we got YouTube TV. So we've been watching a little bit more TV than kind of normally, so to say. And uh one thing I kind of noticed was um, I haven't we haven't watched too many commercials recently. I mean, we still have commercials on Hulu, but uh, yeah, there's some. I saw a commercial for uh, Proactive, the acne treatment, and first off, I didn't even know that was still a thing. Um, it's not my demographic, I don't think, but. For some reason, it came up on some show we were watching. I think I was watching like Nickelodeon or something. So that's probably why it's like demoed towards kids with acne. But um, dude, remember when Proactive uh, first came out? I think I was in like probably seventh or eighth grade and like boom, Proactive hit and it kind of shook the world a little bit. Um, and it was like the first real thing that gave people hope with acne. And, you know, as a, I'd say as a teen, 11 or 11 to maybe 22, um, I wasn't stricken too hard by acne, but, um, you know, everyone has their, their day, you know, their pimple or their, uh, zit that they have to deal with. And 
you know, still comes around nips you in the butt occasionally as an adult. But, uh, yeah, as a kid, you do anything to, uh, not get a zit or anything like that. Or you'd be so jealous of the kids in school that didn't have zits or didn't have to deal with zits or things like that. And, uh, like, I'm just kind of like a mild consumer of zits, but, uh, yeah, when Proactive came out and those commercials hit, those infomercials, and it was only nineteen like ninety five, but oh man, that uh, that gave a lot of kids hope. I think, you know, in my area of the world, um, and uh, but we didn't have credit cards, things like that, so you couldn't buy Proactive. You know, I'm not. You know, twelve year old me is not going to call. 1-800 number order proactive, you know, sent to my house. So, but I also remembered that they used to sell it at the mall and they had the vending machines in the mall, uh, the proactive ones. And yeah, cause they didn't sell it at Walmart or anything like that, but they had the proactive vending machines at the mall, but it was like, it was almost like trying to buy a condom or, or condoms. Um, like if you've never bought condoms before and you're like, I, I don't even remember how old I was when I bought them, but like your first couple times buying them, you're like super nervous and stuff like that. And you're like, Oh, I hope they have a self checkout because, um, I can, no one can see me that I'm buying condoms or something like that. And, uh, that's how the proactive machine was. I think, um, like the, the, the kiosk in the mall, like the proactive machine was always right next to the, like a Claire's, which makes sense because it's like teen girls and guys too, probably. Um, but yeah, it always had like a super nice vending machine, but I think there were like 40 bucks th through the proactive vending machine. And it came in like a three in one kit with like a facial scrub and stuff like that. And, uh, but like, I remember when I got a car, I was like, oh, I'm going to just go there and get one. But I kind of chickened out because, you know, you don't want to be the guy at the mall by yourself buying proactive out of a, a vending machine. Because it's just like, when people walk by, they're like, oh, who's that? Like, then you're going to the mall to get a, a, a kit a proactive kit um so yeah i didn't even know they still were doing that yeah like i think uh hopefully they upped up the ante a little bit or maybe found some different research on you know cures or something like that but uh yeah it was always acne was always a a weird thing growing up that you know some people talked about and some people you know it was the forbidden fruit you know you don't talk about it you know, if I have it, you know, if they have it, even if it's staring you in the face, you know, you don't talk about it unless you're like trying to make fun of someone. But, uh, yeah, I didn't know they still made proactive, but, um, yeah, good for them. Hopefully they're still doing good with the business and I don't know. I don't even think I, I mean, I haven't hung out with a bunch of people that have acne recently, but, uh, if I do, or if you do let them know that there's, uh, there's still hope. Hopefully the new formula is good. Like I said, and, uh, should be able to buy it on Amazon or something like that. But, um, yeah, man, growing up, uh, growing up with acne is, is tough, but luckily for me, um, I didn't have a full beard yet, um, but I at least had a goatee and stuff. So, you know, having a beard kind of keeps that, that skin satiated and keeps that, uh, you know, you can kind of hide things on there. It's kind of like a curtain a little bit. So if you don't want any zits, just grow a beard. And for some reason, I think having a beard kind of keeps your skin good too. There's probably science behind it. But it's kind of like a little blanket for your face. So, yeah, call. Uh, let me know if uh, you guys have any any uh, good stories about growing up with acne. Or some people like uh, loved popping zits, and 
those people probably one are psychos and two probably still wa like do that stuff and watch uh dr pimple popper but uh yeah some people would be like "Ooh, let me pop that zit and but dude that's not me i can't i don't want to watch it i don't want to be a part of it i don't want to like just do it and don't talk about it let's pretend it doesn't even exist you know what i'm saying so yeah if you got any cool stories about you know do uh popping zits or you know being made fun of for having zits or something like that or if you still struggle you could always hit the hotline let me know numbers 414-214-0372 so yeah man proactive is uh and they're not a sponsor either so they're getting a kind of a, a good shout out so yeah commercials so good so yeah we got the youtube tv where we've been watching more commercials and tv kind of in the background and uh if you don't know this about me already i used to work at subway and subway sandwich um franchisees um incorporated um they're kind of a a more uh, national brand of subway sandwiches and um yeah so i worked there on and off probably i put in probably a good nine years off and on um but uh oh yeah they had a commercial for subway and subway's been on this bullshit for so long and people keep falling for it and if you still go to subway and you keep falling for it I'm about to tell you the secret, but on the Subway commercial, it said, um, get to Subway for the new, quote unquote, new chicken bacon ranch. And they keep doing this. They keep selling new stuff that isn't new. I don't know how they keep doing it, but the chicken bacon ranch has been around since early 2000s. And even when we were working there, um, they'd pull this stuff. They'd be like, get the new turkey milk. And then people would come there and be like, what's on the new turkey milk? And we would say, oh, it's just a turkey sandwich. Um, but the cheese, uh, we just put it in the oven for a couple minutes. And I go, what's the difference between that and me getting a turkey sandwich toasted? Because if you go to Subway, you can, you can say, uh, you can get any sandwich cold, you can get any sandwich toasted, you can get any sandwich uh, in the microwave, um, you can get a sandwich with just the meat microwaved, or, you know, so you can, there's options. But, uh, yeah, so they, they would come out with the new turkey melt, or the new steak and chipotle steak and cheese which is just a steak and cheese like they've always had with chipotle sauce which they've always had and it's recommended to have the chipotle on the steak but yeah there's no subway still up to their same their same stuff they've always been up to and honestly that's the nail on the coffin for me because how you gonna i mean hopefully they're not doing too well financially because, you know, there's other places now. Hopefully people are, you know, catching on to the tricks and stuff like that. But if you have ever gone to Subway in the past couple years, nothing's new there. They just keep rinsing and repeating the same things. Don't ever ask for anything new at Subway. Nothing's new. Um, nothing is fresh. And uh, nothing... Um, Nothing's that big of a difference. Like the biggest change we had at Subway, there's two of them. One was the spinach, which was, I guess, fresh. It was in a bag, so I mean, wasn't still on the on the connected to the roots, but it was it was pretty fresh. And then we'd get a couple different sauces here and there throughout the year, like a Caesar sauce or a barbecue sauce or something like that. So, but the meats, everything else, like you're not going to, 
fool me anymore and hopefully I'm getting this message out to the masses that if you go there and order a chicken bacon ranch it's not new this is this has been around I mean I guess if you're a baby and you were born recently then it's new to you but just know that they're doing that stuff still and uh, I could have a whole podcast on Subway and you know I don't think I'm a whistleblower or anything like that, but there's a lot of good stories about my time working at Subway, um, which I think I've got to wait five to seven years before I can tell them whatever the uh, law is that you can't get in trouble or something like that. It's nothing bad like that, but um, yeah, sometime maybe we'll just have, uh, maybe get someone else on here, maybe get Big Daddy, shout out. Big Daddy meets Clay, and we can just have a, a Subway episode and talk about just, you know, our tenure at Subway. Because we were tenured pretty much. We were professors uh, of sandwich making. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a, you learn a lot about life through uh, sandwich making, and uh, that would be a good episode to do sometime in the future. And... I don't want to give them too much press, but yeah. So, yeah, if you see anything new from Subway, just know it's probably not as new as you think. And, uh, um, yeah, try somewhere else. Try somewhere local. Support, you know, a small business. Support, a you know, a dude selling sandwiches out of his trunk. You know, if you buy one of his CDs or something, you know, try and find those type of people to buy. Um sandwiches from because you know subway's just they're they're trying to uh trying to trick you but uh yeah lots been a uh, lot's been going on with the world um if you haven't heard could be a, a another war starting or there is a war right now um on one side you got mother russia on the other side you have ukraine and I ain't going to get too geopolitical on you, which I don't even know what that means. But, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. One, I didn't think I would care at all when I was a kid about what's going on in the world. But as you get older, everything starts to affect you. And uh, it, it, it it's going to be interesting what happens with Ukraine and Russia and everything like that. In particular, I think um, this is going to be the first time um, I know social media has been around for a while. And uh, what's the word? Like during the Afghan and the Iraqi conflicts, um, social media has been a part of that. Um, But that was kind of in a different um part of the world so to say um and i think this this war for whatever reason whether just because we're you know we're kind of linked to russia and in, in in so many ways maybe or maybe not but it, it's going to hit a little bit closer to home in the sense that um just the rise of social media you know um, it's going to be the first real war, maybe, um, that there's going to be live tweets during it. You know, there's going to be, you know, Facebook live of people, you know, in conflict, on, on, in conflict. And, uh, I think it's, we're going to see some stuff where if you want to, you I mean, you can you can see bad stuff on the internet if you want to, but more than any other war, um, I think this one is going to be different in terms of the social media impact on it, and uh, we're just going to see more, and I think it's going to affect more people, and I think you can't, if you have an iPhone... And you 
or a Samsung or just any smartphone, if you have access to the internet, like, why are we doing wars? Honestly, like, um, and what I mean by that is like, we've got it so good. And I know we, when I say we Americans, we think of, we have it so good. And some of us do, and some of us in America don't. And a lot of other people around the country don't have it nearly as good as we do. Um, but overall, this is the best time to be alive in the, in, in the history of the world. Um, it's going to be really interesting um, to see how things spread so quickly. You know, there's already, you know, you if you go on Twitter or Instagram and look at the news, there's all, you know, by the hour, there's already, you know, stories of, um, there was like that fighter pilot who shot down a, a few uh, Russian jets, and they call them the ghost of Kiv whatever the major city is, Kabiv or whatever it is. Um, and then there's all these other, you know, posts about people doing heroic stuff. And it's like, you know, usually you don't hear about that stuff, you know, back in the olden wars, you know, weeks later, years later, you know, at ceremonies or when people re receive their, you know, their medals of heroics. Um, but now you're seeing it the day of, the minute of, um, you're hearing these stories, you're seeing people um, evacuated, you're seeing, you know, missiles hit buildings in real time. And, um, and it just makes you, it makes me feel, you know, really, it doesn't make me feel bad, but it makes me feel something. And... Uh, it makes me feel lucky that I'm here where I am. And uh, me and Chris were talking about this earlier, just um, whatever problems we may have um, pale in comparison to, you know, what, what some of these people are dealing with in their neighborhoods, in their homes, you know, in their cities where they grew up, where they lived, where they love, um, where their communities are and, you know, are getting destroyed or, people are fleeing countries and um i think the older you get the more you realize how you know while it's not impacting me so to say it is impacting me um emotionally a little bit um so yeah it's it's it'll be interesting to see what happens with um this war um there's a lot of kind of when the war first broke out you saw some memes and some like TikToks and you know joking about the war joking about like getting drafted and things like that and I'm old enough to remember in like January and February of 2019 you know the internet was kind of making fun of COVID before it happened like like damn look at this China virus like this virus in China or, you know, all these people are dying. Like people are convulsing on the ground. Like it's crazy, blah, blah, blah. Or like, you know, just kind of poking fun out of it. And then all of a sudden it got, you know, so to say it got here and uh, it got serious. So I hope that doesn't happen um, with this war. Um it's going to be interesting to see though. So I think, uh, every day will be something new and, uh, it's going to be too interesting now. And, um, uh, see segue into this, Mr. Brian Cowan, he's a comedian and podcast. Host. He's talked about this before and it's, it's kind of true now, but the way wars are going to be fought are going to be different in the sense that um, countries will put sanctions on other countries. So, for example, a lot of, you know, on the smallest, simplest way to put it, um, I saw some post on Facebook or Twitter or something that says, uh, 
uh, liquor stores are refusing to buy Russian vodka or sell. They're refusing to sell Russian vodka. And on the micro scale of that, I mean, that's a gut punch to Russia because we know Russians like vodka and stuff like that. But extrapolate that, if you will, um, you know, all these other countries, the U.S. included, are putting these different sanctions on Russia, which is going to hopefully cripple them economically. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be the new kind of way wars are won because, I mean, who really needs land when you have an iPhone? Really, who needs to invade a country when you have an iPhone? And, uh, you know, a lot of people in the world probably feel like they have it pretty good um, and don't want conflict. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's going to be interesting with the whole social media movement and how, you know, um, it's just things things escalate so quickly and, and spread so quickly, good and bad. Um, it's going to see it'd be interesting to see how how long Russia keeps us up and uh, tries to uh, take over Ukraine and kind of what, how they're going to be doing economically with all the sanctions of all the other countries, you know, whether it be closing the banks to them or, you know, stop, stop importing goods or exporting goods from Russia. Um, so yeah, there's ways to, there's ways to hurt, hurt them without actually, you know, fighting with them, so to say. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. We are planning to go to Italy in, uh, September. So hopefully, selfishly, hopefully the plans don't get canceled. Um, uh, hopefully the, the conflict over in Europe doesn't escalate even more. Um, especially to a point where, um, it affects, you know, a lot of our allies and, even affects us directly. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think. I don't know much about the conflict with Ukraine and Russia. I know it has to do with, um, expansion of NATO maybe, or, you know, something like that, but, uh, whatever tiff they've got, hopefully it gets settled, um, soon and shout out to all the Ukrainians out there doing, doing work. And it's, it's, it's wild because if you follow fighting or boxing or MMA, you know, Ukrainians are kind of, dude, they're badasses because even their president's like, I'm going to strap up and like, this is, you know, could you imagine Biden like throwing on an, uh, a bulletproof vest and like a walkie talkie and stuff or Trump trying to like charge a hill or something like that? Can you imagine that? But Ukrainians president's like, you just give me, give me all the guns and let's, I'm ready to fight. So, and you know, a lot of these professional fighters, there's a, a champ champion fighters in boxing and MMA world champions that are, that are stepping up and, you know, they could easily, you know, not fight for their country, but, uh, you know, they're world champions and, uh, they're, they're, they're fighting for the country, so that's pretty brave of them. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I wish them the best and uh, hope for no more co conflict over there. And hopefully we can all just get along and try that new chicken bacon ranch when whenever it drops over in Europe. So, um, yeah, so speaking of uh, this, I got a kink in my neck again still. Um, this weekend uh, coming up, a little busy, busy week, um, but going to see Mr. Brian Callen. He's a comedian. He is a new father, age forty or fifty-four, and uh, he's going to be in Appleton, Wisconsin, this weekend. So we're going to go see him for a, a little bit of comedy show. So I'm excited about that, and uh, yeah, I get to see, do some laughing. Hopefully, that'll feel good on the neck and. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this week, really. Hopefully the, the neck issues are behind me 
And I know I sound like I was like paralyzed or something like that, but it paralyzed my will for sure. So um, we did have a few calls come in this week. Um, so I want to get to those. Let's see here. Let's get these calls up and running. See what these people want this week. You can only eat one brand the rest of your life. Little Debbie or Hostess, go. Ooh, Little Debbie or Hostess, I can only eat one my whole life. <clears throat> For me, it's kind of a no-brainer. And it's Little Debbie, hands down. Little Debbie, hands down. Um, no disrespect for hostess, you know, they've had, you know, our freezer was always filled with hostess growing up, them, uh, Twinkies and, uh, what's like the cupcakes with the little white, white swirl on the top. I don't know what those are, but those are good. My mom would always buy them and throw them in the freezer. We'd get them at like the, uh, uh, there was like a hostess store um in waterloo and i don't know if it was like day old or like um about to expire expired or if it was just like their wholesale store but uh you could go there and just we would you know get pickup trucks full of hostess stuff like that but i'm gonna go out on definitely um i'm gonna have to go with little debbie because one I mean, the goat of all goats is those Nutty Buddies, Nutty Buddy bars. And, dude, if you get a couple of those and freeze them, one, they don't freeze. They just get nice and cold. And, two, those things hit. And uh, Nutty Buddies are kind of, when I think of Nutty Buddies, I think of when the pandemic first started, we would, uh, me and Chris would get, we'd get off work I get off work and um, there's like this bodega like three blocks away from our house in Portland and it was like pretty sketchy looking but also like you felt safe there too because you knew the guy and but they had snacks and little Debbie's and stuff like that and we'd always get a pop like they sold them by like the small cans and like um, we found toilet paper there one time when there was nowhere to be found for the paper. So shout out to that place. Um, it's on 72nd street and I don't know what the other street is on, but it, yeah, shout out to that place. Cause we would get little Debbie's and like we, uh, cause you could buy three, three packages for a dollar. So we get three and we'd split, we'd ha each have one and then we'd split the third one, but we'd put them in the freezer first for like 30 minutes, get them nice and cold. And then they just, it's like snapping someone's neck when you crack into one of those. It feels so good. But uh, yeah, Little Debbie's uh, hands down because, uh, yeah, the Nutty Buddy bars and the oatmeal cream pies, those are, you can't go wrong with an oatmeal cream pie. I'm trying to look up, I'm going to look up their lineup really quick. Little Debbie. Yeah. I kind of like Little Debbie's too because she's kind of cute. Oh, Swiss Rolls. Oh, I guess I got the chocolate cupcakes with the... Okay. Cosmic Brownies, the Fudge Rounds. Had one of those recently. Ooh, those Zebra Cakes. Let's go. Those are good too. And uh, the Zebra Cakes, but also um, the... And my sister-in-law, Maddie, loves these. The... Uh, they're not zebra cakes, but they're the same thing, but they're the Christmas tree ones with the little dust on them, the little green and red dust. Ooh, those are good. The cosmic brownies, I had those all the time. Star crunches, ooh, my God. Yeah, definitely little Debbie hands down because, oh, they make those mini muffins too. Oh, yep, they got the Christmas tree, Christmas tree cakes, they got chocolate. And the ne la. So yeah, definitely uh little Debbie hands down. Hostess was okay, you know, hostess was okay. The Twinkies are okay. But uh nothing hits like a little Debbie. And let me know what you think. You can hit the hotline if you want to debate. 
if you think hostess hostess is uh is better or if you think little debbies are better um let me know you can hit the hotline 414-214-0372 all right, we're going to take another call here. And here we go. Hey, Mobiles. This week's question for you is about burrito rivalries. So Pablo's or Panchero's? You grew up in Cedar Falls, so you'll have to deal with this argument until the day you die with everyone that you meet and talk to. Pablo's obviously has superior salsa and different types of salsa and delicious handsome cheese. The burritos are way bigger. Sure, you could get a little guy, but then you only get two scoops of salsa. Mm. And they put zucchini in their vegetables, which is gross. On the other hand, the other hand Pancheros has queso and fresh pressed tortillas, and those are awesome. Um, you can order on the app instead of carrying an old school punch card around with you. They don't give you any chips with the order, though. Anyway, let me know what you think. You know, you've lived you know, all, the, all across the country, too. You can weigh in on Chipotle versus Kidoba if you want to, but that's obviously not as important. Yeah, first thing, I'll nip it in the butt. Chipotle versus Kidoba. And I've never had Kidoba because I don't believe in eating anywhere that you can't spell good. And I don't even know how to start to spell Kidoba, or even if I'm saying it right. But I had Chipotle once, and it was... It was not good. So we're going to nip that in the butt right away. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you're not familiar, Pablo's Mexican Grill, I think is the official name, versus Panchiro's, probably Mexican Grill is what it's called, probably. Um, but one's a local local shop, one, one location. It's an only child. Panchiro's has kind of got that. Midwest, like we're expanding, but we're not that big yet nationwide. But we're, you know, we're kind of big in Iowa. And I'll say this: Pablo's um, wins, and that's I, I don't. This is another kind of no-brainer for me. Um, I've had Panchiros recently within the last six months. I've had Pablo's recently in the last six months so it's not like i you know <clears throat> haven't tried one in a while or something like that so i've had both both um parties involved <clears throat> and you you <clears throat> sorry you <clears throat> man i got a frog in my throat you are right pablo's i mean they slap they slap because they make their salsas from scratch, and they've got a rotating seasonal menu of salsas <clears throat> that honestly can't be beat. I've yet to find somewhere that has um, the selection and the quality of salsas that Pablo's has. And, and give me a nice fruit salsa, something with like chopped up strawberries or blueberries or like melon or apples. Mix that with something, you know, like a garlicky and like a little chipotle or spicy with some pico or some like corn salsa. Oh, man, it's so good. Sour cream on there. But, yeah, so Pablo's has the best salsas. And the salsa is the flavor, okay? Um, not only that is the Pablo's, if you get the regular size burrito, which is the big one, they're bigger too, so you get more burrito. Okay. Um, both use white rice. Both use black or pinto beans. I get half and half. The veggies, the zucchini is a little disappointing. I will admit. Um, wouldn't be my first choice. Um, and but Chipotle does have the queso, which is nice. And uh, I, they might charge you. Who cares? Um, but, uh, one thing P Ponchero's does have is the fresh pest tortillas. So their tortillas are a little better. I will give them that. Um, Pablo's has tortillas that are already made. And then they, they press them kind of like warm them up, but they're not like the ball of dough that they press out. So 
if Pablo's could get the Panchiro, um, what is it? The the uh, dough balls and press out their own tortillas, and like that would just be the I don't know. Like they could do that easily, and uh, there would be no debate. There would be actually no debate. Um, also, if they made a queso, which is not that hard, if you've ever made queso, which I haven't, but my wife has, um, if they just made a queso, they could make a seasonal queso. They could do a spicy queso, a white queso, a cheddar queso, you know, not that hard, but, uh, they're kind of, they're sticking with the salsa game, which is good. And, uh, um, so yeah, my, my bet would be, my pick would be Pablo's just because I, I like the flavor of the salsas, I like the quantity of the burritos. Like you said, if you get the little guy, then you only get two scoops of salsa, but you can also just ask for an extra scoop. So it's extra flavor packed, which is what I do sometimes. Um, the consistency of the burritos, uh, I'm getting pretty technical here. Sometimes at Pablo's, you got some kid who's like 16 and high, and he doesn't even know his last name, and he's making your burrito, and it's like his first day because they kind of have high turnover. <clears throat> then your burrito comes out, and you just like open it up, and it just falls apart. Um, but I kind of like that too because you're supporting local business. So, um, yeah, definitely hands down Pablo's, um, they have some flaws that they could fix, but I think overall throughout the years as a local restaurant supporting local restaurants, um, I think I would have to go with them and, uh, I look forward to my next Pablo's burrito with their new, whatever seasonal salsa they have on, um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Everyone everyone who argues Panchero's, all they say is they have queso. Like, dude, it's just cheese. It's melted cheese. Okay, we get it. Or they, they press their tortillas. But that's it. They've got those two things, but everything else is on Pablo's side. So um, definitely have to go with Pablo's there. We got one more call to get to here. See if I can answer it. All right, here we go. Hey, Andy, I just wanted to hear your take on uh, with sports. It seems like parochial schools are rapidly climbing the rankings and uh, collecting hardware on a yearly basis, uh, regardless, and they're being held to the same standard as far as enrollment as the public schools. So I just wanted to hear what your thoughts were on parochial schools competing in sports. If it's, they have better programs, are they recruiting or, or, or are like Catholics just way better at sports than other people. Thanks. I mean, I think Catholics would think they're way better at sports than people, um, than other people than non Catholics. Cause they got, they got Jesus holding the wheel, so to say, but um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I, you know, Parochial schools, which just means they're led by uh, led by someone higher power. Usually, um, people in the Midwest would say, you know, Jesus or God or Jesus or you know, one of those figures. Um, but yeah, this this uh, this caller's question was, you know, what do I think about it? And uh, you know, mostly these. These uh, these smaller schools, and they are smaller usually, um, yeah, they got, I mean, we know the church has got money. Um, you know, these schools, they usually, they cost money to go to. Um, and uh, therefore, people who can afford to go there um, usually um, invest in the school in some sort of way. Um so definitely they might have an advantage over a public school who, you know, has to be mindful with their resources and, uh, 
you know, allocate their funds, you know, Title 19 style. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as them winning championships and stuff like that, I don't think it's because God's on their side. I think it's more of just kind of like what I was saying. You know, maybe, you know, the parents who can afford to t pay for them to go to that school um, can also afford for their kids to get better training, better coaching, better um, access to whatever, which makes them better. But a lot of these schools, you know, and I don't know if the big Des Moines schools, I know there's Des Moines Dowling. I don't know if they, if it's like, if it's that you're talking about or if it's like um, the smaller one, like really small schools. But uh, either way, you know, who gives a, who gives a crap if you win a high school state championship? I mean, I certainly didn't. But uh, yeah, the public schools, I mean, pu public schools are pretty much like you get what you get, you know, you, um, it's when you come home at night and whatever's in your fridge, you know, after bar clothes, that's what you get to eat. And some days it's steak, some days it's uh, uh, ramen, leftover ramen noodles, you know, and that's public schools. You know, they can only, they can only do what, what, with what they got. Whereas, you know, um, these Catholic schools or these, um, these schools run, run by Jesus, um, you know, you know, maybe they got, uh, you know, leftover spaghetti and meatballs in their fridge. So really, you know, good for them for, you know, winning championships. And maybe that means a lot to them. Um, but I don't, you know, I think it all comes down to money and uh access that these schools have and uh are they recruiting maybe um i'm sure there's scholarships quote unquote for um high school kids to attend these schools that maybe are good at one sport or the other um you know where they don't have to pay pay in as much as other uh, other programs but um it's no different than anything in life the the people with um more access, more power, more uh, resources usually tend to uh, do better in life. Um, but you're always going to have those outliers and you're always going to have, you know, that 2008 Cedar Falls Tigers football team, you know, losing in overtime and semifinals to Bentendorf 6 to 3. Um, Should have won the state championship, but we were just kind of a, a group of ragtags and, uh, Pat Mitchell was still alive, but, uh, yeah, we should have, uh, beat those Des Moines schools and, uh, we didn't, um, because, uh, for whatever reason, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, it's going to be interesting with a lot of things to see where, uh, schools, um, especially since COVID kind of shook everything up. What, what, what is school in 10 years? What is, uh, you know? Is everything going to be a like private academic learning institute? Because with COVID, it kind of shook everyone up. Like, oh, I don't want my kid wearing a mask. I don't want my kid vaxxed. I don't want this and that. Like, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, private schools, whether it be um, led by, you know, religion or led by, you know, Democratic or Republican Party or, you know, art or whatever it's going to be, you're going to see a lot of these different schools pop up in different communities around the countries, um, to kind of cater to that, that population. So, um, whoever has the most resources is most access is, is usually hopefully going to have a good chance to win, but, uh, I'm rooting for the underdogs out there. I'm rooting for those public school kids who, uh, who, uh, you know, get their lunch paid for by the government. And, uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've already thought about what school is going to be like for my kids when I have kids. Um, there's this thing called unschooling where your kid doesn't go to school. They just kind of take initiation on their own and watch YouTube videos. I think, um, there's homeschooling, there's, um, like tribal quests that they can do 
or private schools or church schools. You know, so there's lots of options out there. And I think there's just going to be more and more options. I mean, even from when I was a kid to now, <clears throat> you know, there's a bunch of uh, different options in my community where I grew up um, for kids to go to school or not to go to school. So um, I think that answered your question, but uh, yeah, good question though. It would be interesting to see what, uh, what kind of unfolds with school in general. Hopefully they cancel student debt so we can all just learn without being burdened. Um, but uh, we'll save that for a different, episode but uh yeah good questions this week guys if uh if you have any thoughts any questions uh, on anything i'd love to hear your take on anything we talked about in this episode uh you can always hit the hotline 414-214-0372 and uh glad i got this podcast out this week i know i waited till uh, the last minute but uh i'm starting to feel better and hopefully get one out later this week and uh Hope you guys are having a, a, a good time with whatever you're doing. And uh, hopefully uh, we're all a little more grateful today than we were yesterday. And uh, we're thinking of everyone out in the world who is struggling with back and neck issues or struggling with uh, countries invading them or, you know, everyone out there who, you know, thinks they're getting the new chicken bacon ranch, but it's been around for a long time. So we're thinking of all you guys, you know, even the people that are ordering proactive, you know, 1-800 numbers, shout out to you guys and, uh, hope things clear up for you if you know what I mean. So, uh, um, yeah, went a little long today, but that's okay. Um, guess I had a lot to say, so look forward to hearing from you guys always. Um, you can subscribe, like the podcast, um, share the podcast. Um, you can listen to it on iTunes, on um, iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud. Um, I should get on uh, Amazon Music too, so maybe that'll be the next one. So, Otherwise, guys, take care, um, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.